So, ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready to begin our pastoral group. And we're now moving to the pastoral our group. But, uh, and here Portugal. we're in, seeing the judge coming all the way from Portugal. It's Luis Pinto Teixeira, a very experienced all around the world, hugely popular. And the first time he's judged a group at Crufts. So he'll be savoring the moment. A lifetime in dogs. Judge 600 shows. A popular worldwide. judge around the world. Please welcome Luis Pinto Teixeira from Portugal. And onto the green carpet. The known all over the world, the Crufts colours of green and gold. Tom Mather, the chairman of the Crufts Committee there, bringing him into the ring. Now please give each best of breed a warm welcome as they enter the ring, starting with the Anatolian Shepherd Dog. And this is where the judge will begin to relax when he sees dogs. He'll forget his nerves when he's looking at the, the dogs. The Australian Cattle Dog. Pastoral group made up of herding dogs associated with working cattle, sheep, reindeer Shepherds. and other cloven-footed animals. Big cheers for the Australian Shepherd. The These breeds typically have a waterproof double coat to protect them when they're working in the elements. And here's the Beauceron, one of the rarer breeds in the group. The Belgian Shepherd Dog, Gronendal. First of the Belgian Shepherds coming in now. The Belgian Shepherd Dog, Lacanoir. This is the wiry coated version of the breed. The Belgian Shepherd Dog, Malinois. The same dog underneath very different coats. The Belgian Shepherd Dog Tavurum. The golden coat of the Tavurum. The Border Collie. Biggest entry here in the pastoral group, the Border Collie. The Briard. Frank? My best of breed. From, he has my best of breed from the judging the, the breed today. The smaller Catalan. The Rough Collie. Distinctive outline there of the rough collie. This one, a beautiful blue merle colour. The smooth collie. Less grooming for the owners of this breed. The Estrella Mountain Dog. The Finnish Lappens. Big like features there. Fan club in the audience, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> the German Shepherd Dog. Again, cheers for this. Uh, the Hungarian Puli. <laughs> Wonderful corded now, coat there of the Hungarian Puli. Spot the head and spot the tail. It's <laughs> the, the Hungarian Puli. And uh, something in a slightly bigger version here. Not quite so brisk in its gait. A lot of substance under those cords. A lot of weight under those yes. cords. The <laughs> Oh, and the little, yes, one of my favourite breeds. They're so full of character. Look, his face is just looking around, thinking I can take any of you. The Marema Sheepdog. The Italian flock guard here. The Norwegian Buhans. The reindeer herder, a degree of elegance about them. The Old English Sheepdog. Instantly recognisable and a real cheer there from the crowd for the Old English Sheepdog. The Polish Lowland Sheepdog. And here's the Polish Lowland Sheepdog. The Pyrenean Mountain Dog. It's a big group this, isn't it, Frank? A, a very lot of big choice. group, yes. The yep. Pyrenean Sheepdog, long hair. This, again, the Pyrenean Sheepdog. Light and elegant on its feet. The Samoys. The Shetland Sheepdog. A little Sheltie there. And again, a Blue Merle. Very light on its feet. The Swedish Malhans. Again, another herding dog. Lovely strut on that one. The Turkish Kangal Dog. The Turkish Kangal, the flock guard. One of the taller breeds in the group. Powerful dog. The Welsh Corgi Cardigan. First of the two varieties of Welsh Corgi. Cardigan. 
the Welsh Corgi Pembroke. See these ones in bigger numbers, the Pembroke. And coming from the imported register classes, the White Swiss Shepherd. Again, a breed new to our country in the showings, the White Swiss Shepherd. And that completes the best of breeds in our pastoral group. I'll now hand you over to Graham Hill and Kim Silitofield up in the commentary box. Thanks, Marina. Well, once again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to get with my colleague. Our judge here just taking his first look at these wonderful best of breeds. Now, some of the breeds were used for herding sheep and other livestock. The others were used for guarding, the dual role sometimes taken by both of them. So they've got interesting histories. And all shapes and sizes here, aren't they? It's not like the toy group, it really is. Depending on the terrain where they worked, really. The little healing dogs like the corgis and the Lancashire healer, and the herding dogs with the longer legs. And look at that impressive outline of the old English sheepdog. A lovely little blue male shelty there. And the first dog comes forward. The Anatolian Shepherd Dog. It's one of the tallest breeds in the group and it would be a pretty off-putting sight if you were a wolf marauding and found this hiding amongst the flock, which is what it used to do. It was a flock guard developed in Turkey and much prized by the shepherds. They lived out all year with their master in all of the climate, so they're extremely hardy. This should be a large, upstanding breed that combines size, stamina and speed. Judge is looking for a broad skull that's flat between the ears and the body should be well boned. She's forgotten to go back to the judge. She's, uh, <laughs> She's just taken a little shortcut to the end there. There we have the Anatolian Shepherd Dog. Here we have the best of breed Australian cattle dog, often known as the Australian healer as he crouches low at work, nipping at the heels of the cattle to drive them on. Comes with a distinctive blue speckled colour seen here and it should combine strength, speed and endurance. This is a loyal, protective dog, often used as a guard dog. And on its toes, this dog, they're, they're very good workers. I've been to the shows in Australia and seen them working. They are very speedy and also tough. They also come in a red speckled colour as well. This one, multiple best in show winner, European champion, Hungarian champion, Italian champion, and here from Italy. Now here is the Australian Shepherd. In the late 19th century, Spanish Basque Shepherds setting out for a new life in Australia took their blue shepherd dogs with them. From there, they moved on to Australia where they were developed into these show dogs, retaining their fitness for function, but now hugely popular in the show rings worldwide. This is a lithe, agile dog, capable of changing speed and direction with relative ease. Judge should be looking for a clean-cut head. Dog should be slightly longer than it is high in body. This dog is the top dog in the United Kingdom for last year, so he's had a wonderful record, and he comes with a, a formidable uh, list of wins to his name, including winning the Contest of Champions only last month. Wonderfully athletic, this square outline, strong in the head, strong bone, and this wonderful reach in movement. And you can see the lovely sturdy bone and feet he has there. Fit for function shepherd dog under that coat. Here 
here we have the distinctive coat of the bearded collie. Shaggy coated dogs were used for herding sheep and cattle in Scotland for over 500 years. Numbers dwindled in the early 20th century and the breed was only saved by Olive Wilson who asked a Scottish farmer for a sheltie, got a beardy, fell in love and saved the breed. Again, they may have this a lot of coat, but underneath that, they have to be have the essentials to be a working sheepdog, and some of them still do work. They're rather a long dog, not bulky in the body. There was an oval-shaped rib cage. They should have some daylight underneath them. They haven't to be overcoated. That would be an exaggeration of a feature. Should have a supple ground-covering movement there. The bearded collie. Now the judge looking at the Beauceron, a French breed and originating in the, in the plains of Beauce, and it's used as a livestock herder, known lo locally in France as the Bar Rouge, which, which means red stockings, and we'll see those on the bottom of his feet, the tan marks on his pastons and his feet. This should be quiet, confident, often described as a country gentleman. This one, a seven-year-old dog, so a veteran in dog show terms, and he's over from Slovakia. And this is a breed which was used in the two world wars as a messenger dog in the trenches. It should be an effortless, supple mover with really good reach. He has some, some similarities with the Briard because he's got the double dew claws on his hind legs, which you can see there. And in the early days of the exhibitions, he was shown alongside the Briards. Here we have the first of our four Belgian Shepherd varieties. This one, the Gronendal. All four are essentially the same dog, but with different coats. They're sheep dogs of a type dating back to the Middle Ages, and their attributes make them an excellent herder. They're agile, light, and robust. They're quite lightly built, brisk on the move, sharp, wedge-shaped head, quick ears, gives them this great alertness of outline. They are in a very alert and highly intelligent breed. And this variety comes in black. The coat should be long, straight and abundant. The Belgian Shepherd Gronendal. And, and here's the here's the Lekinwa, which is the same breed but with a wiry coat, which gives this wonderful expression, these tufted eyebrows and a little bit of beard, and we can see the density of the coat there. This is what distinguishes the four varieties of Belgian Shepherd. They should be a reddish fawn colour with black shading on the muzzle and tail, and give the impression of graceful strength. This one really striding out here. This is the least numerical of the varieties, but they are one of my favourites, actually. Great character in them. Three-year-old bitch here over from the Netherlands. The Belgian Shepherd, Lacanoir. Here we have the Belgian Shepherd dog Malinois, the third of these dogs used for sheep herding and guarding. This one has a characteristic double pigmented coat where the tips are blackened. It should have a black mask on the face and ridge or collar around the neck. And this is the variety which is most used by the army and the police force. And we've seen them in fantastic displays with the police here. They're hugely intelligent, very sensitive, and very fast, and love a job of work. Uh, they don't make the easiest of house pets because they'd like a lot of work to do. Movement should be brisk, free, and even, and we can see this one going really well here in the big ring. The Belgian Shepherd Malinois. And here the Tavuran, perhaps the most popular of the varieties, and coming these lovely shades of red and fawn. Judge, just looking at the teeth there, 
shadings on the mask and muzzle and the sharply pricked ears. Going over the dogs to feel their confirmation. The Tavurin variety should have a long, straight, abundant outer coat. And as with the Malinois, the coat is double pigmented, so the tips can be a different colour to the roots. When I say they're rather brisk in their action, it means they're rather short striding, giving this, this nimbleness and ability to turn quickly. This one, two-year-old bitch from Dorset. Here we have the Border Collie best of breed, the largest entry in the pastoral group today. These dogs were bred for working sheep and sometimes cattle, and their fitness for function is really shown in the speed, their stealthy gait and their herding instinct. The name comes from the border regions of England and Scotland and Wales, where it proved its worth working in the hills and mountains. And this is the dog that can do everything. Agility, we've seen them working in obedience tonight, and they're also hugely popular in the show ring. One of the features of the Border Collie is its movement. It has to be stealthy in its gait and drop its head a little as it accelerates. This is a longer coated variety, and these dogs really do need to be engaged to live a fulfilled life. The Border Collie there. And now the Briard comes forward for inspection. This is another French breed coming from the province of Brie, so good dogs and good cheese coming from that area. This one is a fawn. They are sturdy. They have coat the texture of a goat's coat, the judge just feeling it there, and going down the back legs and feeling for the double dew claws, a breed feature. This dog should have a rugged appearance. The head composed of two equal rectangles and a gentle expression. Proud head carriage on the move there. It should cover the ground effortlessly. A really supple mover. And Frank, you put this one through, didn't you? Yes, and it was a, I had a lovely entry of the breed today. They're a delight to judge. Very rustic. They should be rustic in appearance, not over-groomed. And this one really covers the ground with this clean stride. One of the least numerical of the breeds in the pastoral group, we have the best of bleed Catalan Sheepdog. Originating in northeast Spain, they're still used there as a sheep and guard dog. They're hardy with a protective coat, and those double dew claws, which are hidden on the hind legs, are a really important feature. They should have a smooth gait, trotting freely with vigour. And again, they should be sturdy underneath that coat. This one's striding out well. It's quite a young one, full of temperament. It looks a young one, not yet fully developed in the body. Just 18 months old, this one, a bitch called Layla. That's the Catalan sheepdog. And now the beautiful blue merle of the rough collie. The standard calls for a dog of great beauty, standing with impressive dignity and giving the appearance of working capabilities. And this is what we have here. A century or more of refinement from the working collies of Scotland has brought us to this long, wedge-shaped head and this beautiful quality in the outline. Described as a dog of great beauty and impassive dignity, built on lines of strength and activity but with no coarseness. The head should be like a wedge which is smoothly moulded with nice chiselling to it. The almond shaped eyes give it this lovely soft dreamy expression. Another youngster here, just 16 months old this, a dog called Freddy. That's very young to be winning best of breed. It is, breed. isn't it? And lovely to see a smooth moving rough collie. Here 
here we have the smooth collie, sometimes said to be the naked version of the rough collie. Same origins as the sheepdogs of Scotland, and the breeds existed side by side and could actually be interbred until just 1994. This dog should be entirely in proportion, giving the appearance of working ability. Dignified, alert and active. Slightly longer than he is high, should have a firm, level back, with really powerful hind legs, which are giving the drive on the move there. I, I can't understand why these are not more popular. There's no grooming to them, but yet all the qualities of the collie, apart from the hard-working coat. Lovely free-striding action. Beautiful colouring uh, Until well. the 60s, you could cross the two varieties together, but no longer allowed. Now the Estrella Mountain Dog. Now our judge comes from Portugal and so does this breed. So he'll be looking at it with a specialist eye. It's a flock guard. Hardy, lives out all the year wrong, long. It may have some mass, ah, just a little bit wary there with the judge. It may have some mastiff blood in him. One of his features is this folded back ear we can see there. This one's the breed record holder with 51 best of breeds and also the only one of the breed to ever win a championships show group. Should have a large, powerful head, slightly rounded skull. And again, that double waterproof coat to give it protection when living out all year with his shepherd master. The Samai of northern Finland used the Finnish Lapun to guard and herd reindeer for centuries. Recognised by the Kennel Club in 1945 as the Lapish Herder, but renamed in 1993. These are intelligent, brave, calm and faithful dogs. That profuse coarse coat providing protection in the coldest of conditions. They should be, have an effortless, brisk, agile movement with the tail curved up over the back. This is a this dog, seven years old, from Norway. A breed of spitz characteristics with the wedged head, pricked ears and this plumed tail over the back. Used for herding reindeer and very adept at it and now one of the national breeds and very popular as a house pet in Finland. And the judge just looking at the dentition of the German Shepherd Dog. It's a herding dog developed by von Stefanitz and later used, of course, in the forces, in the security work and with police. Perhaps there's no breed which has changed so much in appearance over the last 50 years. Earlier, they used to be known as Alsatians. Now we've adopted the German name, the German Shepherd Dog. These dogs should be balanced and free from exaggeration. Far-reaching and enduring gait. As the breed has changed in its native country in Germany to have a more sloping back, higher legs and more agility in it, it has led to some exaggerations from some breeders and we're trying to get rid of those now and the Ken Club making great strides to educate the judges to get free of exaggeration and get the dogs to soundness of movement. Here we have the wonderful corded coat of the best of breed Hungarian Puli. These originated in the herding dogs of the Far East. Interestingly, puppies have a coat of loose flock which later cords and that provides insulation and protection. But underneath that coat, the dog is lightly built and nimble. Now, remarkably light in its bone under that and its movement should be brisk short striding you can hardly tell the head from the tail they're almost on the same level which is a herding dog characteristic when they move they drop their heads despite that coat the movement should never be heavy quick short stepping is how it's described keeping a poolie is not so much a hobby more a way of life <laughs> yeah, I think. Yes. full time job yes. <laughs> this one seven year old bitch Yeah. 
now. If we want, yes, a full-time job. Here's the Commodore. It's the Hungarian cousin of the Puli, and it worked with the Puli. The Puli used to herd the sheep and cattle. This one used to guard it. Hardy, working, camouflaged white coat to blend with the flock. That would give the wolves a nasty shock. Now, under that heavy coat, there's a dog which is a sturdy body, a strong skull, but should still be able to be mobile and agile. Now, the coat of this breed is always white, but interestingly, the gums are black or dark grey. And the dark pigmentation, essential to set off the facial mask and the eye and the expression. Now, a friend of mine used to own one of these, and he, she told me that when they bathed it for a show, it took two days to dry. <gasps> so there's a, you know, great love for the breed. A labour of love there. Here we have the wonderful little Lancashire healer, full of character, this one. Thought to be the result of crushing the Welsh Corgi and the Manchester Terrier. They were used from herding cattle from Wales to Ormskirk, or were originally known as the Ormskirk Terrier. One of their distinguishing features is the unique thumb marks on the front legs, which are in the paler colour. Small, powerful and sturdily built is how they're described, isn't it, Frank? And it's, it's thought that they were developed by crossing a Welsh corgi with a Manchester terrier. When the, the corgi is bringing the cattle to market in Manchester, met up with the terrier and this is the result. And this dog's amazing. He is 12 years of age and winning best of breed at Crofts today. He's been best of breed here three times. Little Rolo, he's called. So a great character, as they all are. And as you see, the judge is charmed by him. Yes, Look at him. <laughs> 12 years old, soundness in pedigree dogs. That's something a great advert for pedigree dogs. The Lancashire healer there. Now, another Italian breed, the Maremma Sheepdog. It takes its name from the plains of Maremma in Italy, where for centuries he's been used as a herder and a guard. Again, lovely pigmentation, lovely eye rims there, and a sweet and docile expression, but he could be a very strong dog when guarding the flock. It that conical-shaped head is a unique feature of the breed, as is the slight rise and floor fall of the top line beneath that profuse coat. Now, they have fallen a, a little bit of unpopularity. We've, we've lost numbers of them in the UK. This one has come from the native country, Italy, with his very clever breeder, Anna Albrigo, and sent forward by a Hungarian judge today. Lovely movement, nice level top line. We can see strength and agility there. Very nice quality in the dog. Boo means homestead in Norwegian, and here we have the Norwegian Boohund, a guarder of homes and a herder of sheep. The remains of dogs resembling the Boohund have been found in Viking graves with their owners, which suggests they were highly esteemed dogs. They're spitz-like with their wedge-shaped head, sharply pointed ears and curled tail. They have a degree of elegance to, to them, coming from this quite long legs. They're not heavily boned, they're light and agile and nimble. They've got strong herding instincts. This one is a Wheaton, we also see them in black and red and sable. The Norwegians say it's a dog that's never off duty, very alert. This one, two and a half year old dog, one best of breed here last year as well. Hoping to go one better today. The Norwegian Boohund. Now, the outline of the old English sheepdog. In the 1960s, it, beca it became a canine craze popularized by paint advertising. Today, it's uh, high maintenance to keep a coat like this, but it should retain all its, its essential fit for function. Underneath the coat, big barrel ribs, the judge just feeling the crisp texture of the coat in shades of blue. 
Affectionately known as the bobtail, this breed has a distinctive rolling gait when it's walking. It should have great symmetry and be square and strong looking. This one, three-year-old, over from Hungary, and a multiple best in show winner. Now, and a free and active on the move. It should have effortless extension and strong drive from the rear. This one really powering around that ring, isn't he, Frank? And, uh, of course, we used to call them bobtails when the, the breed was allowed to be docked. Now they've all got these long tail, docking no longer allowed. The old English sheepdog. Big. Here we have the best of breed Polish lowland sheepdog, brought to Scotland by Polish sailors in the 16th century. They're cobby, muscular, herding and watchdogs. Their profuse hair makes that head appear a little larger than it is, but they have a rectangular body and they should have a smooth gait, that thick, shaggy, protective coat. And it's rather similar to the bearded collie and it, it, it that it drops its head when it moves it's a rectangular light and lithe and this again this crisp top coat softer undercoat to give it protection and all of these breeds have a coat that falls over the eyes but it should never impede the vision should it frank and a variety of colors and this one is a best in show winner all breeds so he's uh, the first one for many years to reach those heights And here is the Pyrenean mountain dog, tall, imposing with a degree of elegance. Despite centuries of use as a flock guard, he's a gentle giant, quietly confident. He's got head like that of a bear with almond-shaped eyes and a clean elegance of outline. Now these may have been used as smugglers dogs to evade customs on the Pyrenees. It should be imposing, well-balanced, and of noble bearing. This one, three-year-old from Yorkshire. It's a dog. Although they're tall and have substance, they should retain this elegance, not too heavily in the bo boned. Broad and chest and really powerful shoulders. They're another breed with double dew claws, as we see on the back legs there. The double dew claws, the sixth toe on the back leg. Here we come to Here we come to another breed originating in the Pyrenees, the Pyrenean Sheepdog, long-haired. These were recognized by the Kennel Club in 1926 but date back much further. In fact, almost every valley in the region had its own type with small variations between. They were often used with the Pyrenean Mountain Dog we just saw who guarded the flock, energetic and racy with a windswept appearance. One of my favourite breeds, and this, the Pyrenean Sheepdog, would work alongside the Pyrenean Mountain Dog. The Pyrenean Mountain Dog would guard the flock, this would herd them, light and nimble. And you see these flocks forming in the coat. Feet never moving too high there, the Pyrenean Sheepdog. There's a lovely delicacy about their head and expression and their neat ears. Now, the Samoid, who hails from sledding dogs of two nomadic tribes of North Siberia. Also a reindeer herder, it, fur traders brought the dogs back to the UK at the end of the 19th century. They weren't always white, both white and black dogs used on the first Poland expedition, thought to be related to them. These dogs have a wonderful, distinctive, smiling expression when you look at them. They should have a powerful, wedge-shaped head, and this one really moving freely with great drive, and they should always show power and elegance. And this is a dog with an amazing record. He's nine years old now. He was reserved best in show at Crufts as long ago as 2014, and he's, and he's a winner of four times of Best in Show Awards, an amazing ever young Samoy, Diamond Dancer he's called, a great show dog with his own fan club. 
The Shetland Isles have produced lots of animals suited to the harsh conditions and small acreage. The Shetland Pony and this, the Shetland Sheepdog. The Scottish Sheepdog and Collie is believed to be in its ancestry and it was first shown as a miniature Collie at Crufts in 1906. A small, long-haired working dog of great beauty. The blue milk coloration makes it very attractive. Silvery blue with a few black patches amongst it. They should be light on the feet and almost float along. Just two and a half years old, this one, over from Sweden and already an international champion. His owner says he's a happy dog who loves everyone. Let's see if the judge loves him back. Lovely movement, very composed, very alert. Standing four square there. The smooth, graceful movement there of the Shetland Sheepdog. On the table now, the Swedish Lapland. His name tells us his origins. He was from northern parts of Sweden, part of Lapland, and originally used as a reindeer herder. We see his spitz characteristics in the wedge-shaped head, the long tail now over his back. A small, powerful and sturdily built dog. Should have a fairly long body that we can see here and the ears should be pricked, showing how alert it is. Sturdy and athletic. This one, a free, active mover. The elbow should be fitted closely to the sides as it moves. The Swedish Valhund. Has some similarities with the corgi, but higher on the leg, different colours, this fawn and wheat in colour in the breed. Here we have our best of breed Turkish Kangal dog, recently recognised in the UK. It was previously shown with the Anatolian Shepherd dog. They were used as a flock guard and lived a nomadic lifestyle. They need to be able to live outside in all weathers. Their coat is very dense, most important. They should have a dark mask and ears, which is a distinctive feature of the breed. It's another breed which lives out all the year with its nomadic um, shepherd going around the plains of the country, guarding, very protective of its owners and a bit aloof with strangers and they, they're not the easiest dogs to have as household pets. They're we very independent. For, we should be looking for a relaxed, even gait. And on the table now, the first of the Welsh corgis, it's the cardigan. The cardigan and Pembroke share the same route, but some variations were developed and two varieties separated in 1934. The word corgi is Celtic for dog. This is the longer of the two breeds. Once known as the yard dog, it measures 102 centimetres precisely, which is the measurement of a Welsh yard. Head should be foxy in shape and appearance with an alert, kindly eye. He's rather longer than his Pembroke cousin, and his front formation is different. He has a slight crook to his front legs, and his feet are rounder and bigger than the Pembroke, and his ears are bigger also. And this one trotting out nicely and keeping his tail down, the correct tail carriage for the breed. the Welsh Corgi Cardigan. Here we have the more popular of the Welsh Corgis, the Pembroke variety. Slightly smaller than the cardigan we just saw with a smaller ear. They're believed to be more popular thanks to their royal patronage. They should have an impression of substance and stamina in a small space and that lovely foxy head with alert expression. Another one from Italy here, six year old. An international champion, Italian champion, San Marino champion, Slovenian champion. And He's done some winning. <laughs> it was a huge entry today. We had the American specialist judge, Andrew Carter, crowded ringside to see his judging. 
his reputation much valued as a judge and this one stepping out with style it's got this lovely free action from its shoulders and four legs and keeping its level top line and those lovely white markings there free active movement of the welsh corgi pembroke very alert and using its ears well Now, from the import register classes, the White Swiss Shepherd. Now, a newcomer to the show rings in the United Kingdom. It hails back to the German Shepherd origins when white was not an allowed color in the German Shepherds, but some breeders took them to America and developed them along slightly different lines. They've now become hugely popular in the show rings and as family companions. This one winning today, so a nice win for the breed to come forward here. We should have a So there are our pastoral best of breeds. Who is our judge going to choose for his shortlist? Our judge here just taking one more look around this large pastoral group before choosing his shortlist. Well, a rich diversity of breeds, coats and sizes. There's that little 12-year-old Lancashire healer. You love that, don't you, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> little Rolo, he's a marvellous dog. Yes. That old English sheepdog looking wonderful there in outline. A big winner right across Europe. Uh, professional handler, very well known. Zolt and judged by what a Christina Bailey, one of the great specialists in the Old English Sheepdogs, crowded ringside to see them and a wonderful entry. Some quality dogs in here. So, where's he going, Frank? Well, he's striding purposefully over to the other side of the ring and soon we'll know his choices. Deep concentration. This is where you need to take your time and think which are the eight dogs I like best here and to have them in to have another look. He knows where he's going. Ah, uh, the Australian <laughs> Shepherd. Big cheers from the home crowd. Melanie Raymond from just along the road in Solihull. The Briard, how ah, marvellous. your breast of breed. Well and done, Frank. And the, the Australian Mountain Dog. The Finnish Lap Hund. <laughs> The Maremma, the lovely Maremma from Italy. The Old English Sheepdog. Oh, the Evergreen Samoy Diamond Dancer and the lovely Blue Merle Sheltie. That's a very nice line up here. Lovely lineup. Chosen good dogs. So I judge there, just taking his shortlist back. Going to run them all again. Now, his magic marker, the, uh, the Australian Shepherd, top dog in the UK last year, striding out that lovely level top line, square in proportions, a masculine quality head, lovely bone and feet. The judge looking at the movement for accuracy, drive from the hocks, and the front movement clean and parallel. And here, the Briard, yes, marvellous. Three and a half year old dog here from Wiltshire. Previous three tickets, two of them with best of breed. Really striding out there across the big ring. And his tail has a little crochet hook on the end. It's a little hook at the end of the tail, a breed feature. Here we have the Australian Mountain Dog. This one, multiple champion, a six year old dog from West Yorkshire. It's the breed record holder with 51 best of breeds, so shouldn't be phased by a competition like Holding this. Holding himself well. We see those neatly folded back ears, a breed feature there. The fawn red here, they also come in brindle. And here is the lap hund, 
again, very light on his feet. For such a sturdy, powerful dog. Really striding out there. Beautiful expression. Here we have the Maremma Sheepdog. That conical shaped head there. And it looks really light on the move. It's a big dog, but it looks as though it's going effortlessly. Yes, yeah, seven years old, this one from Italy. A world champion. Our judge has got some big winners here, hasn't he, Frank, in this shortlist? I love this. Old English sheep dog. Three year old dog. Starts off slowly and builds the dog into its trot. Has a slight roll in the movement because of his big rib cage. Plenty of lung room and that harsh, rough coat. And the top line rises over the loin. Don't expect a level top line in all breeds. That needed a rise. And here, look at this dog striding out. He always loves the show ring. That smiling expression, so typical of the breed there. Really putting on a show. And we've got a couple of handles here. We've really put on the glitz, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> And the last of our shortlist, the Shetland Sheepdog, this beautiful blue merle, just two and a half years old, over from Sweden, and, and an international champion. And the light movement, which is so necessary for the breed, and a lovely size and beautiful colour. But lovely again, shortlist. it's not all about superficial beauty, it's about being fit for function, sound and well made, and putting on a show. That's what will get them the top awards. All uh, of these still capable of their original purpose. The, the boards have been brought out. Lewis Pinto steps back. Who's it going to be? He's going. Handlers have their hearts in their mouths <laughs> now, waiting for the do. big decision. Where's he going? Oh, it's the old English sheepdog. I'm so delighted. There you are. The Gorgeous big. example. Really lovely. In second place, it's the Australian Shepherd. Windstar Magic Marker. In third place, it's the Samoid. Little Dan, the Diamond Dancer, takes third place. Big winning dogs, top taking and these places. For Shelty, that lovely little blue merle Shetland sheepdog. What a, and a very happy owner there to get called out to the boards. So here we have our winner of the pastoral group at Crafts 2020, champion bottom shaker, the greatest picture, three-year-old dog, the old English sheepdog. Over from Hungary for Crafts today. Multiple best in show winner. Will Crufts be added to his list of accolades? Well, Sunday we'll see. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, yes. uh, the result, the handler, looking very happy. He's a professional handler from Hungary. Goes all around Europe and he specializes in the old English sheepdogs. Very Looks much. absolutely delighted, doesn't he? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a quick word with our winning handler here, Jolt. I'm always talking to you in these big competitions around the world. Tell us a little bit about this win here with this beautiful old English sheepdog. Oh, wow, I'm just out of words. Uh, he's my new dog that I'm starting the show last year. He's actually the grandson of Jimmy, who won a pastoral group here uh, eight years ago. So I'm just really, really proud to this win, especially because the group judge is just spectacular. And our breed judge, just, I think, the best one who can judge this breed. So I'm really, really proud of that. Well, that's summed up. I don't think I have any more questions to say because that was absolutely a beautiful answer. Many congratulations. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Jolt with your old English sheepdog, I believe from Hungary? Yes. Well, congratulations.